So let's talk about you have a startup business idea, right? And you think that you just need uh, some cash to sort of implement the idea. So you're looking for a massive business loan, right? But you have no money. You have no revenue. How do you do? How do you actually uh, solve this equation? So this is what I'm about to talk to you into this conversation about. Okay, let me give you the steps you need to really think about. So when you have a startup and you are looking for a startup business loan with no money, you got to be really, really, really selective here. So the first thing you want to think about, you want to think about what kind of loan you need. That's what we call startup loan suitability. Because the whole thing here is that if you have no revenue, the lender is looking at your ass and thinking, you know what, this is too risky. I ain't taking that. A lot of lenders will say that, right? You go to a bank, they'll tell you, hey, listen, no, we don't want to, we, 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 we cannot approve you. You go to a credit union, hmm, not better. You go to an online lender, hmm, not really. You go to an alternative lender, they, they want your ass, but they just want to charge you like crazy, like a crazy APR. So the whole thing here is that you find yourself and you, you have a dilemma, right? So you got to really ask yourself, am I going for a business lender who wants to charge me, let's say, uh, 30% or 40% APR? Or do I go with uh, a lender such as a bank or credit union that wants to maybe charge me 5% or 7%, but they will give me, instead of uh, giving me uh, $100,000, they give me 10 grand. So this is a, the sort of a delta, the sort of like equation you got to solve, okay? So when we talk about startup loan suitability, everything goes back to what you need the money for. So see, the whole thing here is that you you want to you want a massive startup loan with no money. But my question to you is, what do you need the what do you need the cash for? Okay, do you need the cash for operations? Do you want to expand? Do you want to uh, make payroll? Okay, do you want to buy inventory? What do you need the cash for? Because this will determine whether or not you you get the loan amount that you need, and most importantly, which type of loan you need. Because you see. When we talk about startup business loan with no money, you have online term loans, you have business lines of credit, you have business term loans, you have SBA 7 loans, 7 a loans, you have micro loans, you have asset based financing. So you have a large constellation of, of loans and you, you know, you got, you got to be really careful about what you need the money for so you can pick the right type of a startup business loan. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. We love having this kind of conversation every now and then. And uh, please make yourself comfortable and just enjoy the show. So the first thing you got to think about is the suitability, the loan suitability. Okay. The second thing I want you to think about here is that you got to think about your credit worthiness. See, the whole thing is you have to check your business and personal credit score, personal credit scores. The thing is, let me just break it down for you. The way it works is here is that when you, even if you have a startup, you can still have a business credit score because what happens here is that when you have a startup, if you don't have a, like you can, you can actually contact Don and Bradstreet so that you can have a, a Don's number. And once you have a Don's number, a lot of, uh, a lot of suppliers, a lot of business partners will start reporting data about you. And the thing here is that even if you don't know about it, some some suppliers will start reporting data about you. So that's why you always have to have a an irreproachable attitude. You want to have a great attitude vis-a-vis -vis everybody. Okay. So if your credit score, your business credit score is is crappy from the from the get-go, that's that's really bad. Think about it. You just came here, like you you just like hey, you know, you are three months old or you are three weeks old already. You you have a fifty pay that score. That's crazy. By the way, for paid scores, you want to have a minimum 80. That's where the juice really starts at. Okay, 80, that's really cool. Now, on the personal side, things are a lot easier though, because on the personal side, you have a much more leeway. You can control it, right? By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's conversation. The topic we are addressing in today's convo is how do you get a huge startup business loan with, uh, let's say, with no revenue, okay? No money. you like, you're just starting, like everything is just like, hey, you know, I just got here. I have a business plan. I have a business model, whatever, but I just need, I need to have some cash to actually boost my business. So credit worthiness is really important. Now, one thing you need to really pay attention to here is that you want to see the, the link, the linkage, if you will, between your personal credit score and your business credit score. Usually if you are a startup and you are by yourself, if you are a one person business, the lender just want to systematically and reflexively check your personal credit score. They don't care about your business credit score for that matter. Okay. They just want to see whether or not you are legit, but they also want to make sure that you are financially responsible. 
at the personal level. So this is why you got to pay attention to, to this duality. Look at those two things. The third thing I want you to really pay attention to, boss, is uh, you want to go back to uh, your paperwork, your documents, okay, everything. And it, it's all about organizing yourself. It's all about making sure you have the proper paperwork. It's all about making sure that, hey, listen, if you are in an industry where they ask for certain types of paperwork, make sure that you adhere to uh, the best practices in the industry. Let's say, for, for instance, if you are in healthcare and you, you happen to know that the lenders before evaluating your business loan application, they will ask for your HIPAA, your HIPAA, your, your, your HIPAA compliance documents, right? Or you, you are in an industry where uh, worker safety is really important, so they want to know your OSHA, your OSHA compliance documents, your OSHA compliance statements. Those are little things that you might be thinking that are nothing. But lenders pay attention to that because if you are, let's say, in a heavily regulated industry, the lenders see this as a risk, quote unquote risk, but at the same time as, as, a, as, a, as a plus sign, right? As, as a minus sign, but also as a plus sign. So what you want to do here is that make sure when we talk about paperwork, I'm not just talking about your tax returns for the last three years. I'm not just talking about your uh, your uh, financial statements, your projected financial statements. I'm talking about everything else. OK, we're talking about everything that really that shows that you are a legit business and everything happens at the state, le at the state level, though. OK, so, for instance, what I'm saying here is that if you want to borrow from a lender in uh, Florida, you want to make sure you have uh, the proper Florida paperwork. Same thing if you want to uh, borrow from someone in Utah, like, like it has to be, it has to be, especially when it comes to a company uh, organization documents, like ALC documents, LP, L, like LC, S Corp, C Corp, those are done at the state level. So you want to make sure that you are really, really keen on that. And you know, as a matter of fact, there was an article not long ago in the Wall Street Journal that says that uh, documentation for, for business loans is uh, starting to shrink nowadays because a lot of lenders are comfortable about getting everything online like getting uh their uh like knowing more about like doing some due diligence about a prospective borrower online so everything is available on the internet right so they can actually do a soft pull on, on you they can do a hard pull on you they, they can actually access uh public databases and they'll do i mean there are software tools that crawl the internet and sort of uh, consolidate everything okay so this is good i guess Next thing I want you to do here is that if you are trying to get a huge startup business loan and you want and you have no revenue and you are in an industry that is complicated, like you're not making revenue and uh, the, the economy is shaking right now, the, the sector you're in is shaking, you got to really uh, be uh, ready to uh, evaluate the lenders that you have. OK, the thing is, you need to, to you, you need to research and compare lenders. When we talk about researching and comparing lenders for your startup, you do you need to look at a lot of avenues, okay? Not just one avenue, not one, not just uh, like you can't just say, you know what, I'm only going to talk to banks. Well, you you don't know if the banks are going to be like the source of your future or funding uh, ability. No, they, you know, like it's one of those things you really have no idea. So you got to be in a situation where you are constantly talking to multiple sources, to multiple institutions. You have to talk to uh, to online lenders. You have to talk to uh, credit unions. You have to talk to alternative lenders. You have to talk to banks. Boss, you got to talk to everybody. You want to I want you to canvas the, the, the offices of many financial financial institutions. OK. And when you talk to them, when we talk, when we talk about comparing lenders, how do you actually compare lenders? Well, you got to look at things like um, annual, like the, the APRs, right? The fees, their other costs, like they, some lenders will charge you a, a closing fee. Some will charge you uh, an administrative fee, whatever they're charging you. Make sure that it is legit. And you also want to pay attention to the lender reputation, boss. Okay. Again, I want to repeat today's topic. I'm talking to you about how to get a huge Start a business loan with no, no, no revenue, no uh, income, no cash flow, nothing. Okay. And one thing I want to also mention here is that the state you're in also plays an important role because there are some lenders who are not available in, in other states. So that's why you got to be really careful if you, if you are doing research on the internet, then make sure that the lenders you are choosing, that lender is actually present in your state. And uh, because, uh, yeah, we, we, we have seen in our industry that some lenders are like, you know what? No, 
California is too complicated. Utah is too complicated. New York, don't even talk, don't even think about it. We ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. We're not going there. So this could be uh, maybe uh, the lender that you are currently eyeing. So be very clear about that. Be very, you know, careful about that. Now, one thing I want to talk to you here about it, here, boss, is that, you know, if you want to get a huge startup business loan, you need to start early. You know, what do I mean by this? What I mean by this is here is that if you, let's say you just got your paperwork from the state, you got your brand new LLC, articles of uh, organization, everything is cool. You have your name, you have your first name, last name, you're all happy and all that. And you're looking for a business loan. And you want a massive business loan. You can't, you cannot apply right now unless you have like good connections. You're born into an, into a great family and whatnot. You, you, you know, people, right? You know, people, but if you just like me, you have no idea, like nobody knows you and you don't know anybody. You got to really uh, start a little early. So that means what? That means like basically, uh, you know, if you know you, you want to apply for a loan six months from now, start today and you start cultivating relationships. You start really uh, doing some kind of courting. You know, it, it, it's really, you know, it, it's really, really important for you to position yourself in a manner that allows you to get the business loan that you need for your startups. That means what? You need, you want to talk to, you want to start calling the banks right now so that you, you want to ask them what they're, what, what kind of a uh, profile they're looking for. So you can start positioning yourself accordingly, right? You want to call right now your your alternative lender. You want to contact an alternative lender like Kalamata Group, Kalamata Capital Group, or Baboa Capital. Talk to them, right? Ask them what kind of uh, what kind of information they're asking. They, they, they will want to have. You want to contact. Uh, you also want to try the. Uh, you want to try lending marketplaces because see the thing is, if you're looking for a, a huge startup business loan, you can talk to banks, you can talk to credit unions, you can talk to alternative lenders, you can talk to online lenders, you can talk also to online marketplaces, you can talk to uh, the lenders of the world, you can talk to the NBCs, the National Business Capital of the world. Those are big players. Okay, they'll take care of you. Okay, and it's very important to understand that. When we talk about formal submission, submitting, submitting your application, you know, before we even talk about that, I want to make sure that you understand the fact that you need to uh, submit your application, but please make sure you always do a pre-qual, do a soft pull to make sure that everything is fine, that you are, you're good, like the, uh, that you're not surprised about the offer they're giving you anyway, okay? This is really important because you want to preserve your FICO score, you want to preserve your, uh, your, um, your, yeah, FICO score business-wise, but also your your personal credit score. Let me give you a few pro tips, boss. Let's quickly have a conversation about, you know, sometimes things happen and depending on the state where you're in, you might actually qualify in another state, but uh, the state you're in does not like they have rules in place and the lender is kind of scared, like they're really scared to approve you based on the uh, the regulations in that state or based on your own profile or even based on uh, trends in your industry, in your specific industry. Because the thing here is that a lot of a lot of mistakes that uh, startup business loans a lot of mistakes that startup business uh, businesses make is that they don't think about their uh, their industry. They, they think about yeah, you know, I'm I'm just thinking about my personal credit. I'm thinking about my, about my business credit. They don't think about the profile, the risk category that that the bank or the, like let's say a, a lender in general as like tags onto that specific industry. So it's really important to have that in mind, okay? So if you get rejected for a startup business loan, you have options, okay? You can actually, uh, you can contact the lender directly to find out why your application was rejected. And that information can provide insight into changes you can make to improve your credit profile and future approval odds, okay? And then you want to actually uh, continue developing your business's finances until it is established well enough to qualify for a startup business loan okay and you can also think about maybe a business credit cards or business lines of credit for your startup okay so so the whole thing here is that you have options you have options and in some cases you you have a states there are some states right now that have a, a startup development center so you actually get there and you get a loan 
like an interest-free loan, okay? They will train you. They have some kind of an incubator. So this is kind of cool. So instead of being by, being by yourself, you have uh, like an incubator that is located at a university. And you, if you're part of that, you have to apply for that incubator. But once you apply and you get accepted, you just go there on a daily basis or a weekly basis, whatever. But what, what you want to do here is that you want to do something that will help you improve your profile so that you can get you can be approved okay and this is really really important this will help you in the long run very importantly before i close to this conversation i was just talking to you earlier about what to do if you uh if you are rejected for a business uh for a startup business loan there are some startup business loan alternatives now, obviously, I want to do. A, I want to qualify my um, this this statement by saying that those like the alternatives I'm about to give you, they're not going to give you as much money as you as a, would a startup business loan, because those players I'm about to cite, I'm about to uh, indicate, they're not lenders. Okay, they probably even if they are rich, they have their own risk uh, risk aversion profiles. Okay, and so so. Here are all the alternatives you want to think about. You can think about business credit cards. You can think about personal loans for a business. Okay, so you can get actually a personal loan from your bank or credit union and use it. You can use it for business. You can use your personal savings. You can also use, uh, you, can, you can actually tap into your friends and family. If they have some kind of a liquidity going on, if you have a well-connected or well-healed, so to speak, well-healed, friends and family then you can actually ask them to lend you the cash that you need you can also think about crowdfunding i mean this you know the 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 really the the sky is the limit when it comes to a business funding as long as you know the right people here okay and one thing i also want to see here is that i want to tell you that you everything goes back to what i said in terms of uh how much you need and how much you can you can afford to repay letters are available 24 7 Lenders will give you the money you need. Lenders will give you the cash you need. The big question that all lenders ask is, you know, how am I going to be repaid, right? Because the lenders want to be repaid. They don't care too much about, you know, the fact that your startup is struggling, whatever your startup, uh, yeah, you're that you are new, that you actually started like a few months ago, whatever. But they are just more interested in about one question, which is how do I get paid? Okay, it's all about liquidity inflows and liquidity outflows. So if you, if they're saying that you have not demonstrated the ability, your ability to repay the loan back, they're not going. Then they're not going to approve your loan. Okay, this is why a lot of times you get you get denied for a startup business loan, and then you think it's because of your credit. Like you know, my credit score is kind of bad, so they, they you know they were not support. They were not going to approve me in the first place anyway. Even, even before trying, okay? So those are really important elements you need to think about in terms of, okay, have I done the job? The, have I done the right job here? Have I actually uh, increased my uh, my profile? Have I actually increased, have I improved my borrower profile? If, if the answer is yes, then you need to think about the, uh, the backup plan, really. Thank you so much for your attention i really appreciate it in today's conversation i was just talking to you about how to get a huge startup business loan and uh, I, I give you the the steps we have startup loan availability credit worthiness paperwork startup lender assessment you know formal submission submission and i give you a few pro tips as well as a, as well as a bonus thank you god bless you i'll speak to you another time but until then remember stay marvelous